So let's look now at the distribution of organisms within a biosphere. And when we're talking about organisms being distributed, the distribution depends on the environmental conditions. So things living somewhere depend on the environmental conditions of that area of the earth. So not every type of organism lives in every part of the earth. Now, when we're talking about this distribution, it is the abiotic factors, the non-living factors of that environment, such as temperature, precipitation, also known as the climate, that affect the distribution of life. And if we use this picture, we can actually see how the distribution of life occurs. So if we were to increase our temperature, go from permanent polar ice conditions and get all the way to desert as the temperature increases, we see a change and actually an increase in the number of organisms. Well, the same thing can apply in dryness. If we go from an area that is very, very moist, lots of moisture like a tropical rainforest, an increase in dryness will also see a change in the type of organisms that exist. So it's both temperature and precipitation that affect the distribution of organisms within the biosphere. Climate is actually affected by the location on Earth, how far north and south we are, and we call that latitude, how far up and down from the equator we are, but also by elevation, how high above sea level you are. And again, this picture can help us, and we might have an idea with being here on the west coast, going up a mountain, as we increase in latitude, so as we get closer and closer to one of the poles, whether it's north or south, the temperature decreases and we get closer and closer to polar or permanent ice. Also, the same can apply if we go up. The higher and higher we go up, the colder the temperature gets and we get closer to permanent ice. And this is true if you ever see a mountain that's got snow in the summertime. Doesn't matter the latitude. If it is high enough above sea level, it'll have snow or permanent ice. And as we work our way up that mountain, we can see changes in the type of vegetation from trees to smaller trees working our way up. Now, when we're talking about climate, weather, temperature, precipitation, all of that together. Now, when we're talking about climate, we're often concerned about two major components of climate. Climate is often dependent on the temperature and the precipitation. So a climatograph is a graph that actually can show both the monthly temperature and precipitation for a certain area on Earth. And this might be a large area, or it could be something very, very small. When we're looking at a climatograph, the bar graph shows precipitation, the amount of moisture, whereas the line graph shows temperature. So let's look at this graph for Vancouver. We can see the bars down here showing the amount of precipitation. So in January, the precipitation was about 150 millimeters. In July, there's July right here. July, it's under 50 millimeters. But the line portion of the graph, there's the line right there, shows the average temperature. So we can look at this climatograph and we can see that in the summertime, through June, July, August, there is low precipitation and a much higher temperature. And in the winter, November, December, January, February, March, all those months, we can see a lot of precipitation and a much lower temperature. So the climatograph gives us a snapshot and again, it can be a large area or a small area, depending on what we're trying to look at. Well, let's look at biomes. And biomes might be new to you, or at least a new word to you. What a biome is, is a major ecosystem with similar abiotic conditions and similar organisms. So similar abiotic conditions, similar temperature, precipitation, and similar organisms. Same types of plants and animals. And on Earth, there are many different biomes. And here's a picture, and again, this is in your data booklet as well. If we want to compare different areas of the Earth based on their abiotic conditions and similar organisms. 
So if we look at North America, we can look here at the brown in North America, the boreal forest. The boreal forest in North America is very similar to the boreal forest up here, the northern parts of Europe and Asia. Whereas if we want to look at a desert condition, the desert of Africa, there's the area right there, very similar to the desert of Australia, or even the deserts of North America. Similar organisms, similar abiotic conditions, now obviously not the same, but very, very similar. And these biomes are distributed around the Earth from both, both the North to South Pole. Now, when we are looking at biomes, there are many different types of biomes. We're actually going to recognize the eight major biomes. And the eight major biomes are this. Polar ice, tundra, the boreal forest, the temperate deciduous forest, grassland, desert, temperate rainforest, and tropical rainforest. These are the major biomes, the eight major biomes that exist on Earth. And the good part about these biomes is they're in your data booklet. So they are at the bottom of the picture in your data booklet. If you were looking at a picture very similar to this picture, you will see down at the bottom all the different types of biomes that exist. Now, when we are talking about these eight major biomes, as we go from one area to the next, both these neighboring areas are called transition zones. So when we're looking at a biome, using this picture. If we were going from North America and going in this direction, let's say we were going north, it appears in North America that there is a border right along there between the boreal forest and the grassland. Now that area is actually a transition zone. It's not like a river or not even like a border on a country. It is a gradual transition. So that gradual transition might be hundreds of kilometers to go from a full grassland to a full boreal forest. And in between there, we'll have some neighboring biomes that have the same organisms. So some of that has trees, some of it has more like grasslands. And the same can be set up here. If we're going from ice to tundra, working our way down, we have these transition zones. And we're going to study these biomes and the types of organisms that exist there in much more detail.